Good morning, test. And you might need the key to get into the 500 yeah, tower. Yeah.
Yesterday we saw some fabulous great scenes, but not least from Fernando Pimenta, a local hero with a blistering K1 thousand meter performance. We saw Martin Puxa dominate the T1 1000. We'll see him compete in the T2 today, the T1 junior, the T1 senior. He's going to be a busy packer. We saw Caitlin Bryan win the women's K1 500 meters, and we saw the dominant Jennifer Pendragon in the new Olympic event of women's T1 52. And of course, for the British fans, we saw Susie Broadley, who took away a K1 1000 meter silver medal. So, join us in a few minutes' time as we'll get underway with the men's K1 200 meter T1.
Já temos o alinhamento para esta final B dos 200 metros. Na pista 2 vamos ter o finlandês Jani Mattinen. Aqui está ele, 23 anos, foi semifinalista o ano passado aqui no Mundial Universitário. Sul-africano Christian Coitz, 26 anos, o atual campeão africano. Venceu em Pretória o ano passado os campeonatos africanos, sai na 3. Da Eslovénia, Tilan Vidovic, oitavo no Europeu de Sub-23. Messias Batista de Portugal, apenas 17 anos, do Náutico de Ponte de Lima. É o campeão nacional júnior, vai sair na pista 5. Na 6, Lewis Fletcher, 24 anos, o escocês. Está no projeto olímpico para Tóquio 2020. Na 7 da Eslováquia, Martin Nemček, ele foi segundo na uh, final B dos mil metros. Já alcançou uma prata nos campeonatos de juniores. E Osama Diabali, 21 anos, foi quarto nos campeonatos africanos. Vai sair na pista 8. São 200 metros, prova rapidíssima, final B, K1, 200 metros. Well, you can see the start also important here, and it's Lewis Fletcher from Great Britain, the Scottish paddler who's got away best of all now. He needs to hold his rhythm. There he is in picture, driving those legs. You can see he's got a narrow lead at the moment from the South African Christian Coiti, but it's all down to the final 50 meters as they approach that now. E para já a liderança vai para o atleta da Grã-Bretanha, Lewis Fletcher, quando começa a subir o Christian Coitzer da África do Sul na pista 2. Messias Batista anda ali na quarta posição. Vai ser vitória para a África do Sul. Pista 6 e pista 4, Grã-Bretanha e a Eslovénia. E o português Messias Batista na quarta posição. Well, if you've just joined us via the live stream, welcome to Montemorovelo. This is the first race of today. I'm Mali Johnson, alongside me, Orlando Silva. And we've just witnessed the men's 200 meters B final. And you can see from the start, the replay there, lane six it was. Lewis Fletcher, who made the best of the start, but Christian Cote over in lane three began to come through very strongly towards the end. It's all about holding your rhythm, keeping that stroke long, and Fletcher does that early on. But the South African begins to overhaul him just towards the end, and it's all about sticking to your race plan, keeping it going right the way over to the line, and just on the lunge, it looked to me like Lewis Fletcher took the silver uh, second place there and Vidovic from Slovenia in third. So we'll have to wait confirmation of that. But a good race in what is ideal conditions. The water's warm, the temperature, the air temperature about 25 degrees. Paddlers really enjoying paddling at this fantastic venue on the last day of the first World Cup of the season as paddlers and coaches begin to build towards the pinnacle of our event, which will be the Olympic Games in Tokyo 2020. So results there, just confirmation, a quick time, 35.9 from Christian Kutzi, the South African. Lewis Fletcher confirmed half a second behind in second place, Vidovic in third. Vitória então para o atleta da África do Sul, Christian Kutzi, 35,941.
Hello and welcome to Monte Moro Velo in Portugal for the first ICF Sprint World Cup of the 2017 season. And of course, it's the first of the Olympic cycle. 270 athletes from 28 nations are competing here at the High Performance Center. We saw five, eight finals yesterday, a lot happening. We're showing you 12 finals today. It's going to be all action, 200, 500 women, men, canoe, kayaks, individual and crew boats are going to be on the water. I'm Matthew Layton as always, my guest who is competing yesterday, Olympian Anella Hatch. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for stepping in. Today the conditions look very, very good. Yeah, today the conditions are great, like on Friday they were a bit stormy, the wind came from the right side, but today it looks great, so we can expect great races. And the temperatures are very fine at 25 degrees, there's actually like a mill pond outside at the moment, as you can see, very little wind. We've had a couple of B-finals, so we know that the, the lanes are performing correctly, and we're going to be going through, we'll show you on the screen in a couple of seconds, all the action. And because we have quite a long show today, we can also show you six of the medal ceremonies. A good, uh, good flock of people uh, today, uh, watching family and friends. We're about 20 kilometers away from uh, Figa da Foss, which is on the coast, halfway between Porto and Lisbon. And we're going to go straight into the lineup of the first final today. It's the K2 women, 200 meters the A final and it is stacked with familiar faces to us the general public and to you Anna the professional. Yeah on lane when we see the girls from Ukraine Anastasia Todorova and Anastasia Halova on lane two the uh, girls from Portugal I bet the crowd will be cheering for them a lot and then three the young Hungarian girls Noemi Lux and Sofia Sinashi. 21 and 20 years old. And again on lane five the Portuguese Marcia Aldeas and Marcia Cabita. On lane six, we know the girl in the front, Kyla Imre. She was in the K4 at the Olympics and um, doubled up with Briara McLeary. Colombia on lane seven. On lane eight, Lisa Carrington and Amy Fisher also um, in the K4. Amy Fisher and Lisa Carrington, the Olympic champion in the K1 200 bronze medalist over the 500. On lane nine, Mexico. So going to be a very tough race. Well, it is. These girls, I think five of them are going to be doubling up into the 500 metres in a few time. Who is out the fastest? It looks at the top. Portugal have really Portugal, got a flying Ukraine, start. But yeah. we have uh, Carrington and, and Fisher, Fisher, who are also competing together this week in the 500. They've really taken it on. It's difficult to see with the camera angle. Lisa Carrington only doing the crew boats this weekend, but she's looked very determined. And they're absolutely flying away. Yeah, it's Lisa 200 metres her third event. Strong. They look really strong, you can see the stroke of Lisa and Amy, it's really strong and really long. But I lane two, the Portuguese girls and the girls from the Ukraine, they look also really, really good. And Coming back well, into the last 20 metres, it's going to be desperately close. New Zealand just takes it from a fast finishing Portugal wow. nice. with Ukraine coming third. Well, that gives us a bit of drama. It looked at the midpoint, we saw a boat length up for New Zealand and then they were pulled back a bit in the yeah. end, weren't they? Yeah. Good racing from the Portuguese girls and from the girls from the Ukraine. I don't know who got second there. I yeah, think it the was Portugal came yeah. second and Ukraine came third. Wow. So is that a surprise that uh, that, uh, that uh, Lisa has a, a whole stack of skills? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, um, Lisa was competing amazing at the Olympics, also in 2012 and 2016, and the rest of the girls are also doing a great job in the K4. And Caitlin won yesterday, the K1 500 meters, and amazing. In the third time. fastest time yeah, ever. Yeah, amazing. It? The race was just incredible, really. Well, was, that's what they need. They need a quite tight start. These teams, they need to come out, they need to do boat control, and they're next off five of the boats, I believe, in the K2 500 metres, and that is going to be in 40 minutes' time. Oh, that's close. We had this also before. <laughs> it's, it's close. But it'll be, it'll be all with the New Zealand team, it'll have been worked out to the second. Yeah. They'll know exactly what they're supposed to do. And here we have official results. It's first in New Zealand, Carrington Fisher. Portugal take the silver medal, Vasconcelos and Lana. And it is Ukraine, Todorova, Holova. They had a really, really good start with the second team from New Zealand, uh, Kalinwe and McGilly, coming in fourth position. So it's uh, the really time-wise 36.563. The time is very, very fast. That looks good as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, 
Elvis found the girl from New Zealand. <laughs> Trying to keep us always uh, happy. Ooh. How was that? They all look very, very relaxed. Tone strong, yeah. don't they? they look very yeah, yeah. strong athletes. They look really strong. So why are you not racing um, crew bets this week? Um, we decided to race at this World Cup and in Seged, the K1, because <coughs> we didn't train in the K2 together for Fair quite enough. a long time. Yeah. We're going to carry on in a minute, but yeah. first of all, we'll just look at the lineup. For it's a straight final. It's a C2 women, 200 meters, A final, Great Britain, Senegal, and Spain. It's great to see Senegal come here. They have five competitors in the actual competition. I've been informed they have seven boats in the whole country. So the resources obviously very, very limited, but if anyone wants to help out, I'm sure they'll be delighted, but it's great that they've actually put a, a boat across. In your picture, it's Beth and Chloe, uh, part of, I think, there's quite a big startup in the canoes for the, for the women in the UK. I know they put some, uh, some, some energy into there. Here we go, coming to Cambi Sec and Alma Gray, who's also doubling up in the, uh, the C1. And then finally, we have Nia Toms, the rugby player from Wales, and Sian Mills, who's a very fine cook. <laughs> They both can come through the talent identification program. And, and uh, canoeing in Austria? Uh, canoeing women in Austria, you mean? Yeah, no. They're, they're no one. No there's one no, there's is no program? No, no. Not to develop, in just no, case of... Uh, not really. Okay. Just focused on the kayak, women and men. But as it's coming into the Olympic program, it has to be rubber stamped for the nth time at some point in the summer. Um, but it's, it's uh, I think we're seeing, we saw certainly yesterday with the times and the, the fact there's a couple of heats in, in the in C1500, we're starting to have some, some interest here. Spanish have a, a, a large team, I think they have one of the largest teams here this weekend. Lots of new athletes coming through, testing themselves. Lots of young athletes, yeah, it's good. To the start line. Okay, the, the, but the tension is the same, isn't it? Though whether you're in a, it is. a final, and for most of these athletes, it's the first international outing, and so we're going to see how they are, how they perform at this level. But the tension stays the same. It doesn't really matter if you paddle for ten years or just <laughs> now. But I think you need that, don't you? Yeah, to you need to it. get yourself yeah. up and going. Oh, she missed the bucket. Has to go back now. Yesterday, or two days ago, this was a real challenge. Yeah, because of the storm challenge. and the wind, yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a big uh, right-to-left wind coming down the course, and, and, and it was, a, I think, a couple of the actual athletes didn't manage to do it in the end. So this is the first time we've seen it on the live feed. Let's see how they're going to go. Ready, set. Oh, yeah, they're all off. A really good start from the British girls, yeah. Well, they have Main a four. couple of teams in this, so they're starting to look competitive. We're going to see the individuals and the C2 500, maybe the, the, the more experienced athletes going to be going in there a bit later. But the Brits are certainly going for a, a, an internal competition. Yeah. It's only 200 metres, it's a perfect weather conditions. Lane, t lane four and lane six, the girls from Britain, but also on lane one, no, on lane three, the girls from Spain, they look also really good. But Senegal, uh, we do have yeah. one of the uh, Olymp Panaman Olympic uh, Hopefuls, let's see how they're going, but it's very much a case of the Brits in lane number four, Bethany Gill and Chloe Brackwell are leading it out, giving this demonstration. We're having a real battle though for second place. It's Spain against Britain. Who's going to take it? No doubt about the winner, it's Great Britain. And it looks like Great Britain is the last couple of metres they've come back to claim the silver medal. So that's a clean sweep for Great Britain, which is... Uh, it's good that the, the, the team that's putting in the resources, they're reaping the rewards. Well done, girls. Does that make you want to jump in a canoe? No. <laughs> I don't think I'm very talented for the canoe. Well, that's the second of 12 events we're going to be showing you today. Times and have a look, see sort of reference what we're looking at here. But they all managed to come off to a clean start. And we'll just see in the next three or four years these athletes becoming more, as the, as, the, as the pyramid grows larger, to become better and better with more competition. But a clear victory for Bethany Gill and Chloe Brackwell from the Great Britain team. 
and the the A-listers from the Great Britain team are going to be out in Seged and the next weekend. So it's a three series of World Cups. We start here in Portugal. Next weekend, the home, the mecca of canoe sprint is going to be in Seged, which is it's about three kilometers from the, the uh, Serbian border in the south of, of Hungary. And then we get to Belgrade, which is about four hours drive away. There they go, they have a cat. Last year they had actual uh, uh, speakers on the or, or listening devices on the actual pontoon so we could hear what they're saying to each other. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Which was uh, it's quite interesting, high risk uh, situation. And this year they haven't done it, but uh, great performance there. <laughs> Here we go, official results in 49.279. Great Britain take the gold, break. Britain take the silver, Spain take the bronze, and, and not too far back, Senegal take the fourth place. So we're going to be moving on now. This is a an event that has been Olympic, it's coming out, it's a C1 200 meters men's final, and there are some serious candidates here. Helda Silva, who we saw yesterday in the C2 1000, he had a cracking start, but going through them, it is lane number two, Diego Torres from Portugal. And lane three, Martin Fuxa, he won yesterday at C1000 meters. And he's going again a bit later. You wouldn't have done that in Brazil. <laughs> he's, he's going again uh, a, a bit later in the, uh, the C2 500 with his younger brother, uh, Peter. Oleg Tarnowski took the silver medal yesterday because uh, Sebastian Brendel did come in second behind uh, Martin Fuchser, but his bait was adjudged to be, it has to be 14 kilograms, and it was 13.98, oh. so 20 grams less. Uh, but he was well beaten by over length. Here's Helda Silva, who has uh, some good results here in the last couple of years, and uh, has to go up to the longer distance. Hugo Pedro from Spain. Spain obviously have a, a good reputation with Alfonso Benavides. De Lopez, who's not competing this weekend, he's probably the, the top competitor they have there. So they'll just be lining up. Obviously, the older brother of Moldovan Sergei. But Martin Fuchs, they looked technically and everything very very good yesterday he led yeah. all the way he looked really strong also in the last part he looked very strong and good and last year he was a similar there he did perform exceptionally well apart from the olympics when it didn't quite go didn't quite go right and in lane number him. one from uh, Santomi and Pansy but he's just held back a bit but it, it looks like at the moment it looks like Oleg Tarnowski and Hilda Selda in your picture in lane number seven is taking it away. At the bottom also, we have Hugo Pedro from Spain looking to put in a performance. So there's three boats definitely in it. At the top of your screen, it's Martin Fuxa. It is, at the moment, it looks like Tarnowski's very close as well. It's too close to call. Hilda Silva's in there in the white boat, second up from the bottom of your picture. Who's going to take it? It's going to be either Fuxa for Czech Republic or it's going to be Helder Silva. It looks like Martin Fuchs is going to take a second victory of the weekend. That's impressive to take the 1,000 and 200 wow. meters. Yeah, yeah two completely different distances, being a 1,000 meter pedal and 200 meter pedal. And he's just really amazing in both distances. Well, we've said it a couple of times before, but genetically he's built to do this. His father and grandfather are both great international. Um, that's typical of the Portuguese, they date show the first person, they just show who's come second. And here we go, is the Tiago Tavares uh, disappointed in his body language when he came over the edge, he came over the end because he was very much up there and then suddenly found himself in third position. But they are real gymnasts, aren't they? Yeah. But well done, Martin three, Fuchs. Seven, it's uh, Max, uh, three, seven, Maxime Beaumont was trying to do the same thing. The, the great French athlete came second in the 1,000 metres and he's going to be lining up as probably one of the favourites in the 200 metres uh, a little bit later. So that's good marker to put down at the beginning of the season. Seems Fuchs and Portuguese third place for yeah Portugal well Portugal say second and third yeah well that's a bit, a bit of excitement action going on there but he, yesterday he was saying in interviews he was 
bitterly disappointed uh, at the podium. He won, which meant he was exciting, mm -hmm. but he hoped to stand next to Sebastian Brendel. Yeah. <laughs> who's a bit of a hero and he's a bit of a, had a problem with. But here we go back to the uh, results. Is it Martin Fuchs that takes the gold for the Czech Republic in 39.4. Helder Silva for Portugal takes the silver. And Tiago Tavares takes the bronze for Portugal as well. Just behind, missing out this time, is Oleg Tarnowski, who took the silver yesterday. So uh, back to, to familiar territory for you now. Yeah, the so K1 it's the K1 200. They're just having a chat with each other, comparing the course. Obviously, some sort of internal battle going on there to get all the line. Yeah, because at the Europeans and World Championships, just one boat is allowed to race there. So it's good if you have if you have strong um, guys to compete in your own country. For sure, and, and you have uh, Yvonne Schwartz, who's not here this weekend, but she's uh, she's been driving the field for the last 10, 15 years, hasn't she? In uh, in uh, in Austria. Yvonne Turing, yeah, yeah. Turing, yeah. sorry. Yeah, sorry, I mixed them up yeah, completely. Exactly. <laughs> so I confused Yeah, look, she's coming. She's not racing the World Cups. She's just coming to the Europeans and to the World Championships during the K1000 meters. I think she just wants to try something else this season after the Games. There we go. The crowd is all looking forward to that. It really is bang, bang, bang. On my program, I thought we had a, a medal ceremony now, but we don't see any activity going on whatsoever. There's the courts. It's going to be updated a little bit. It's already very good though. So as you can see on the graphics, it's the high performance center. There's the uh, 18 big hangers in there. Do you, have a, do you have a preferred end to be at or you just take it, take it where you go? Um, excuse me, in the... In the actual area, do, uh, do you hang around? Where do you hang around where it's sunny? Uh, we actually just hang around in the hangar because it's too hot outside, so... Um. Yeah, they, they, they made it ver very nice for us. They have TVs there, and we t can ju just watch the races there. It's really good. And just chill out and yeah. do what you like. And then to the right of that, we have the athletes' restaurant, where you can have copious amounts of, uh, of pasta and all sorts yeah. of things to keep you fueled. And this is the, the st starting on the right-hand side. That's where at the bottom of the tower. Then they have the VIP section, so the VIPs can come out on the balcony and wave. And then obviously you have the area for the supporters. It's probably a little bit less supported this year uh, for a couple of reasons, I suppose distance, and also there's three weekends in a row. And as I mentioned yesterday, uh, people, the benefit of people not tuning in yesterday, because the Pope was in the area last weekend, all the hotels were full, so they had to reschedule the, the events. There's now three in a row. So really? a lot of, <laughs> lot of, uh, lot of countries can't commit to three weekends, so it's going to be a, it's a modest but very well organised one this weekend. Uh, the challenge for Thursday and Friday clearly was the wind, which has really been mastered for today, because that's the perfect conditions. Most of the athletes stay about 20 minutes away, so there's big buses that bus you in every day, aren't they? They come to, yeah, to here. Yeah, they're taking the back. bus like for 20 minutes perfect. to get here. trying to see what they're doing and listen to the Orlando who's the speaker uh, here we come we have the first final of the day so it's a normal procedure you have the athletes led out first third first second dignitary will give out the awards and it's happy days. This is actually 
Critically, the timing, because the athletes, the winners and the second and the third, are back on the water in a, in a, in a few minutes' time. Yeah, they have so to race the K2 500 meters, so it's really not enough time for them to to go to the ceremony and go back to the start. So it's well, they're due to start at 11.26, <laughs> and now it's uh, in local time. It's uh, five to say they're due to start off in half an hour. So it's going to be interesting to see how they how they work that through. And you, your your Olympics, you finally managed to get there after yeah, lots yeah. of heartbreak, <laughs> and tear, and uh, and all sorts of things. And was was the experience as you expected? Yeah, it was it was it was amazing, racing at the Olympics and being there and all everything was just really amazing. So we started off in tears in Duisburg. Yeah, Duisburg was, we just lost by a bit. And I, d and I didn't understand that. Everyone was saying, well, no, you're the only person who can answer, but with 50 meters to go, you were, you were leading your race. Yeah, exactly. And what happened? We were just dying <laughs> in the end. Like, we were just, we just couldn't keep the, the stroke, we just couldn't keep the power in the water, and we were just, just felt like we, we didn't, well, we didn't move a bit. And the, the Swedes came through. And, and the Swedes came through, yeah. And so how did you, venti how did you eventually get the, the, the ticket to go to? Um, we just uh, knew like two weeks before, okay. before the games, and yeah, because um, apparently um, it was coming back from the Russians. Okay. And so we got we got the ticket because from our place from the World Championships, not from Duisburg. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So complicated, and then you went there. Yeah, it was two weeks, there. I suppose. It's too yeah too close to actually panic isn't it you just go out there and enjoy we yourself we were a bit stressed because um i was racing k2 not with my normal k2 partner we have yeah. trained with the last five years because vicky had an accident like three days after the qualification she she had an accident she broke her shoulder and we didn't expect to, to ever go to the olympics so we just um trained we trained for our national championships and then they said well you have the ticket but you're going to race with someone else in the K2 because your K2 partner apparently can't really race. And that, that, that was quite stressful to build up a K2 in like 10 days. It was really, really stressful. An experience. And you keep keeping going as far as Tokyo? Yeah, I will. I will keep going until Tokyo. Anna Hatch from Austria has joined us today. What's, what would you say your strongest discipline is? My strongest? Event. Um, my strongest event. Because you seem to cover most of them, didn't you? Yeah, but I think I'm, I'm when I'm in a good shape, I'm good in the K1 500. <laughs> and I'm quite okay over the 5Ks, I think. You're racing, you're racing that this afternoon? Yeah, I'm and racing And that's with a new, a new format. That's going to be quite fun, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We will start one minute after, after the guys, and we will start at the 500, not at the finish line. And yeah, it's it's totally different, but I think it's going to be great for, for all the spectators to watch. Well, the athletes just in front of us lining up for the medal ceremony. We have two, oh, we have all the teams here. They must be absolutely burning, the, the uh, New Zealanders, because they have these very smart black tracksuits. Yeah, it must be really the, hot. Uh, <laughs> with the sun. Hi. <laughs> Today it is the ICF president from Spain, Jose Perina, also a member of the IOC. So this is the first event we saw. It is the women's K2 200 meters. So here's the medalist for the 200 meters. So stepping onto the bronze position is going to be Anastasia Todorova, Anastasia Holova, and you can just see the dignitaries I've just mentioned in a second ago. 
National Canoe Federation, Jersey Pro accompanied by John Protter, team leader of New Zealand. John Protter Here's from the the team bronzes. leader so. of New Zealand. The bronze medalists representing the Ukraine, Anastasia Todorova and Anastasia Holova. So you probably picked that up over the speaker system. Ukraine, take the bronze medal. Always a special moment to receive uh, receive a medal in front of your your fans, and obviously beamed around the world, which is which is great. So everyone can see you at home. <laughs> the silver medalists representing Portugal: Joana Vasconcelos and Francisca Laia. So a very popular choice here. Clearly, uh, experience and for the future. And then next coming out, the gold medalist. No, no surprise for anyone, but uh, it gives her good confidence in the team from New Zealand. They have uh, two fours boats that are going to be seeing in our says time, which is really good to look forward. It's obviously New Zealand's Lisa Carrington and Amy Fisher. And World Cup winners representing New Zealand, Lisa Carrington and Amy Fisher. So it's going to be interesting if they can repeat it next weekend. Next weekend, uh, Lisa is going in the team boat with uh, Caitlin Ryan, who won the K1 500. They still haven't made any decisions about the future. They're chopping and changing and trying to find the right uh, combination. That's good, though, that every every athlete gets a sh gets a chance a to chance see. to go with Lisa. Yeah, exactly. Oops, wrong side. The New Zealanders <laughs> are not used to kissing each other because it's not there. It's not really, really? national. Uh, They're used to hug each other, I guess. Hug and shake yeah. hands. Yeah. That's why there's maybe some blushes out there. <laughs> John steps up, does the honourable thing. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Nova Zelândia. Please rise for the national anthem of New Zealand. <laughs> Well done all the athletes, New Zealand first blood, they're back in the next race in 26 minutes time. So hopefully they manage to uh, manage to go through. Here's the compulsory photographs to keep the record forever. We're starting to see the flags picking up a slight, slight bit. I guess it's nothing, uh, nothing special, but the far side of the water where you can see them in the background at the top of the athletes' heads, you can see the flags starting to move a tiny little bit. Right, next up, that's three out of the way. It's going to be the men flying down the track now. It's going to be the K1 200 meters for men. Thanks, sir. I can't read my own writing, I'm sorry. It's the women's, of course. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see Christina, 36 years old, lane number one. Uh, lane number two is Kashova. And we just, they're all your friends, so you can talk about Yeah, them, lane number three is Teresa Portella. We can expect a very, very quick start from Teresa. And on lane number four is Bella Ponomarenko Yana. She trained in Australia with, together with Vicky, and she has a little boy as well, Marta. Olympic silver medalist, so I think Marta will make this one. <laughs> Teresa Portela from Spain. 
My name is Seven Anja Osterman, a young paddler also from Slovenia. I think she was also out on the Gold Coast as well this year. Yeah, exactly. Who's this one? Yeah, I know this one very good. I keep my fingers crossed for this one. <laughs> yeah, Vicky. She had an injury, had an operation last December, and I really hope she's going to have a good race. Jenny Egan, I'm happy to see her in the final. Just missed out yesterday. Yeah, really. By, by a fraction of a second. But here she is uh, from the Salmon League Club in Ireland. Mother and father are here watching. Hi, Pete, if you're watching at home. Tension here, the wind's not going to come into it. So there's a few real flyers here, aren't there? There's, as you mentioned, Teresa Portello in lane number three is fast off the block. Spellers especially, she came second yesterday in the 500 metres. And Marta, Marta took a bit of time off with injury after the Olympics, so she struggled a bit in the 500 metres, but she's such a character. Who's going to be first away? Uh, well, Jenny Egan at the bottom had a flying start. Also, lane Jenny number three, it looked to raise uh, Portello. Lots of fast start. Lane number five, we're obviously expecting that uh, Marta in your picture, Marta Voltakevic, uh, has a great start. But at the moment, it's lane number three. It's Teresa Portello taking it away. But there's four athletes in the line now. Yeah, that's going to be close. You can see Teresa having the lead, but Marta and um, Spella, they are really, really close. So it's lanes three, four, five. It is Portugal, Slovenia and Poland coming through. It looks like it's going to be desperately close as they get. Oh, too close to call. It's going to be Portugal and Slovenia. Really, really close there. That was a Whoa. great race, wasn't it? That was a great race. It was race. really amazing. I think it was Teresa. Yeah. Wow. And that's what they're giving it to her. Well, as we saw, she was... Uh, just missed out yesterday, she came fourth, but to have a great victory, Fernando Pimenta uh, had a victory yesterday. They gave us their and it's yes, second great. again in two days. Some great starts there, they're all off the blocks. Yeah, but, but on lane three you could see Teresa's just jumping out of the start. She's doing this every time. Like Everybody's wondering how, how fast she can start. Mentioned Artful Care, which had some time off with injury. But when she comes back to full force, she's certainly uh, not but desperately close there. Look it at that. really, really close. I'd say Teresa, yeah. That's what they're giving yeah. her. Less than tenth of a second, we'll have to see. You can see her just really strong pedaling and really strong strokes. Well, it looks like it's been confirmed. Yeah, it's Teresa. Well done. It's amazing to win in front of your home crowd. Boost is up for the season. Yeah. Here we go. Official results. Uh, point, point zero one four. Uh, Teresa Portella takes the gold for Portugal. Spela Panamerico Jandic has Slovenian silver. Marta Voltkevich takes the bronze for Poland. Then we have Ukraine, Slovenia, Austria, Hungary, Spain, and Jenny. Only two seconds back, which is good in these conditions. Uh, Jenny Egan from Ireland making the final. So it's uh, good, good news there. Strong field and a very, very close final. And uh, Vicky? Vicky was sixth. I think she will be happy. It was a good race from her. So she's showing off her scars. It was quite a, she fell out. She had sleepwalks, didn't she? she yeah, she had sleepwalks and she was falling like eight meters down. And Lucky you're alive in a way, I suppose. Yeah. First time she just told me, she was just messaging me that she broke her nose. <laughs> and then I was going to the hospital and she was just like totally injured. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be the C1 women's 200 meter final. Stanila Stamanova. I've been talking to quite a lot in the last uh, couple of days. We're staying in the same hotel and uh, she's, uh, she's on form, but she's, she needs to find a, a good permanent coach. She spent a bit of time in China over the winter. But uh, we, need to, we need to do something there to, uh, to help her go forward. Uh, moving here, we do have uh, Anna, as you saw, from, uh, from Spain. Vera Agbella, who yesterday won the 500 metres. She's uh, certainly an up-and-coming talent there. Very shy, but uh, certainly knows how to put it together. Here's uh, Katie Reid from uh, from Great Britain, came okay, from Judah, I believe, through the talent identification program. She really pushed Stanila to a close second yesterday. Ludmila from Ukraine, she was first in her heat as well. Stanila Stamanova is the world champion from Bulgaria. A powerful athlete there. Yeah, Nayetsova. I I remember her doing the K1 before. I think she she just switched to the to the C1 now. She came fourth Strange. yesterday. By adapting 
and Karen Roquet as it's going in the Olympics. It's uh, going to get more and more interest here. Is uh, Ginsko Takaj, who is the the pairs partner with uh, with Virag Bauer. They they push each other very closely. She was a second yesterday, and then we have uh, Maria Perez. So it's uh, the levels going up and up and up. Canadians obviously have a couple of very very strong paddlers. Yeah. So as the season progresses, it's going to be really, really uh, interesting to see how they develop. So if you remember from the plans four or five years ago, and people were saying, well, isn't it? they're never going to get it together. But even each year, the times are coming down. Now the girls are already very, very fast. I've seen many of them uh, training in Seville because I've been in February in Seville and Ready, a lot of girls are set. starting to now to see one. Well, they're all off and it looks like early to show. Well, they're still all in a line, aren't they? At the top of there, it's Virag Bali who won yesterday, set lane number two. Here she is in your picture. No, this is lane number eight. eight. This is Kinchko. Yes, so it's the two oh Hungarians yeah. are coming through. They had an internal trial last week at, in Hungary. And it's Kinchko who won by 0.8 of a second. But they're certainly saying uh, at the moment they're looking very, very dominant at the moment. Uh, Stanila is uh, a little bit back there, perhaps a bit uh, uh, suffering as a stage. We come into the last uh, 80 metres and it's an exhibition here from the Hungarians. It's going to be an Olympic discipline, so they're really going out for it. They always have close battles. Well, it's going to be, be coming up to the line. It looks like for the second time in a row, it's Virag who takes oh. it. Looks like lane two, yeah. Yeah, Virag Bala from lane Hungary. Four Close the with Kinsko. So that's the second time in two days that she's taken the gold, just ahead of her compatriot. And they're going to be going quite soon in the C2 500. So a great performance there. The middle of then came through in third. So if you look at the in the red boat in the middle, if you look at the uh, Staniela Staminova, she she never found a rhythm really, did she? She was always uh, always chasing them. She had an awful start. Yeah, she looked like she was a bit struggling, but you know, it's it's the first race of the season, so until the World Championships. Uh, I think many athletes will just will just push themselves even more and that's that's really really close so all, every race they have together it's, it's neck and neck which must yeah. be only good for the, the discipline of canoe she speaks very good english as well which which is which is great So here we go, confirmation of the results for the C1 women's 200 meter final. It's Virag Bala takes it in 46.846. That's a fast time. It's a good time. Kinsko yeah. Takac from Hungary also Just takes it. One tenth behind. One tenth behind. <laughs> and then Mila Luzan with Ukraine taking the bronze medal with Katie Reed just missing out this time. And Stemula Stamineva from Bulgaria uh, a little bit back with some work to do. So that's a fast time there, 46. Now the one I was going to wait for is the going to be the men's finally. The men's K1 200 meters. Well here we go, looking down the bind. I suppose we have to look at Maxine Beaumont. Yum Chavez also very fast. Tunov from Ukraine. Went in the crew baits as well. Philip Svab from Czech Republic want to look out for. I suppose that the, the Maxime Beaumont, as I say, he's, 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 he's five or six years ago, before the, C, the K1 came into London, he was a K1000 specialist, then he yeah. came down, and now he's gone back up again. Hugo Rocker, so here we Portuguese go from Portugal. Czech have quite a small team out, they have the brothers from, we saw Jano a couple of minutes ago, and there's about five or six of them, they've certainly brought good athletes again. Spain, Daniel Abad has had some good results in the last couple of years. And there's uh, the favourite from Boulogne sur Mer, the north of France, Maxime Beaumont. He, I think he probably competes in more events than most. He just arrives the day before and goes in so many events. He got one yesterday. K1000, yeah, he got second after, after Fernando Pimenta, the Portuguese. The Latvian peddler. 
Actually, two Latvian paddlers in this final. Yes, and Rumshaz. They have outstanding starts, often we find. Nathanelia, they're from Great Britain, Norris. Nottingham. <laughs> He's a fun guy, I've met him last year. Is he the one training to be a pilot? Yeah, I think so, mm. I think so. And Vettinen from Finland, again, Finland have a quite a small team coming out. Go lining up, red flag, white flag, and it's going to be 35 seconds of flying action. The conditions are looking good for a, a good time. Say so Maxim at Beaumont Maxime. in lane number four is already going Amazing out start. with uh, Umtjevets in lane number seven, which we'd expect. Here we go, Beaumont all the way. Along, he looks really, really strong, really powerful in every stroke. With two and a half. On the K2 yesterday, also coming through, but they're having neck and neck in the Olympics. Uh, Baymont was leading until the 150 meter mark, then came off it. I don't think he'll want to let that leader go ahead. We've got 50 meters to go, and it is very much a case of Maxime Baymont with a meter ahead of Tunov of Ukraine, taking it 1 2 with it looks like in lane number 7, Zunchevic takes the third place. How do you see that race? Well, I can't, I can't say who took the third place. It was really, really close here. But Maxim was just dominating it. He was just, from the start until the finish, he was just having a great race. Yeah, third place goes to Alexei Rumchavic. Did you see the times there? No, but I think that the times here were very quick yesterday and the wind is we, we don't, we hardly have any wind, so I think it's going to be a good time anyway. The water is warm, so that's good for us. Well, there you go. Very Clearly, close. Maxi Baymont is showing that he's on form at the early start of the season. Tunov came first yesterday with Ivan Schmelin in the K2 500 meters. So he's obviously having a very good weekend. There we go, Maxi Baymont takes the gold 34. medal. Igor Tunov, good time, 34.908. Wow. And third place is Alexey Umtrevets from Latvia. That's fast, isn't it? It's really fast, yeah. It's really quick times here. Here he goes, another day at the office, packs his bag, goes home. A couple of days at home, the kids, and then goes off to Seged. He's the French team, he's the whole French team. Here, yeah. Yeah. It's just him here. Local volunteers doing a, a sterling job all week, getting up photographs uh -huh. of all the athletes was great. <laughs> Starting to fill up a little bit. It's now quarter past eleven. We're coming to you live from Montemor a Velo. Lovely course about twenty kilometers away from the coast. And Anela Hatch from Austria is uh, joining us and giving you words of wisdom. Are you looking forward to coming out for the Worlds next year, hopefully? Yeah, I'm really looking forward. And this year the Worlds are going to be in the Czech Republic. In Ratice, the great course there. And then in 2019 it's going to be in Seged. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the women's C2 200 meters will begin.
going to be showing you six medal ceremonies today. This is the second one, which is the women's C2 200 meters. be in Segen in strength next weekend. Yeah, it's exactly. great to see some new faces uh, senhores, putting it down in the international scale. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalist for the women's C2 200 meters event. As medalhas serão entregues por José Manuel. Nice and clearly, and clearly, so we'll let the speaker announce. O Olímpico de Portugal, acompanhado por Heather Williams, team leader da Grã-Bretanha. The medals will be presented by José Manuel Constantino, President of the Portuguese Olympic Committee. Accompanied by Heather Williams, Team Leader of Great Britain. E as medalhadas de bronze são... The bronze medalists representing Spain, Ana Rios and Maria Ramal. So they closed in very fast, made it a very exciting fast 50 metres. But the Brits uh, managed to hold on both teams. So I think it's the first time we're showing this in the uh, the live TV program. So you can see there's a lot of depth of talent starting to come through. Yes, medalhadas de prata. The silver medalists representing Great Britain, Nia Thomas and Sean Mills. So that's great. Uh, they seem to be glued together whenever you see them, they're together. On the, uh, really? The two girls? Yeah, that's yeah, I think days. that's normal in a K2 or in a C2. You spend a lot of time together, you train a lot of time together in a boat and in training camps and <laughs> you're getting really good friends. Well done. And it's the first British pair taking the silver medal. And the British pair take the gold medal as well, which is great to see. The gold medalists and World Cup winners representing Great Britain are Bethany Gill and Chloe Bracewell. Well done, as you've heard, Bethany Gill, Chloe Bracewell take the honours today and they won it quite convincingly didn't they? Yeah, they seem to be quite, quite great well ahead. Meters. And for the first time today we're going to see the uh, here rather British national anthem. Two girls are really happy. Well, first time on the international stage to, uh, to, to have your own album. Nice. Anthem is great, isn't it? Please rise really nice. for the national anthem of Great Britain. Britain take the honours there, gold and silver with Spain taking the bronze medal. applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists. It's the first time in a couple of years no one's taken a selfie. Did you see a selfie? No, no selfie. Wow. It's it's shows it's the first, it shows it's the first yeah. time on the stage. <laughs> they will regret that. They don't know that they have to take one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so 
so the last ceremony before we saw this was the K2 200 women and they had to go away, do their press commitments, jump into their kit, go on the water and they're going to be starting in a minute. Exactly. So hopefully they've all managed to do that. Of course we're talking about the K2 women 500 and we did have Lisa Carrington's going to be going in lane number five. She came first there. Here we go, back to the 500 mark. This is your discipline. It's one of your disciplines, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, just Lisa and Amy just won like 30 minutes ago. The K2 200 meters and Joanna and Francisca from Portugal were second. They, we can see them on lane three now, racing the 500 meters. And yeah, it's stressful. It's really stressful. But for you or for them? For both. <laughs> no, it's not stressful for me, but I did this as, w I did this as well. 2015, I raced a K2 200 and then 30 minutes later the K2 500. So you really have to be fit to do that. But the girls are in great shape, so we can expect a great race A lot of them. familiar faces looking down the list. Uh, hungry to young teams. Mexico had quite a few athletes in here. Have you mentioned in lane number three, Leale Vasconcelos, who've just done well in the last event? And Carrington, Fisher, Thompson, Cole, part of the new K4, Deborah Kerr, Sam, Sam Reese Clark, Clark, who are looking to put together a performance, Colombia and Spain. So it's, uh, it's great to see some youth and experience here battling it out over this, uh, over this distance. Feel free to say anything you like. Yeah, the uh, young Hungarian girls on lane one and the other pair on lane four. So the Hungarian main team will be coming over uh, in Seged yeah, next weekend. Yeah, I think so. I think the main team will be racing in Seged. The Mexican girls with Marcela Rodriguez and Brenda Rodriguez, Joanna and Francisca, two very, very nice girls. The second Hungarian pair with Naomi Lux and Sofia. Senashi, a very young pair. Lisa and Amy on lane five. They look really calm and relaxed. Well, they fired out of the blocks in the K2. There's going to be some stress going Line on here in the second pair. Other New Zealand pair. Then the young girls from Great Britain, Sam and Deb. It's got quite a lot of strapping on the left shoulder. <laughs> Columbia on lane eight. Great to see them in the final. On lane nine. Miriam Vega and Natalia Garcia, the Spanish girls. So, 40 minutes ago, New Zealand first team, they came first in the K2 to 100 meters. Portuguese, they came second. So, it's good to see that the girls are really doubling up. And they're all going in the K4 500 in about another 40 minutes time. Oh my god. They will sleep good tonight. <laughs> so well, they're actually flying back tonight. To the fl well, not sorry, the New Zealanders are flying off to Seged or Germany tonight. So here we go. This is the K2 500 meters. Couldn't wish you any better conditions. Do you wish you were out there? Yeah, I wish. I like. I like. Really love doing K2 and especially the 500 meters. So I'm really excited to go back into this. Ready. So these guys, yeah. they'll be. Well, talk us through it. Anyone quick to share lane number three? It looked like Portugal yeah, got off to a, a really dynamic start. start, but uh, also Lisa Carrington thinks it's a 200 meter race. She's absolutely flown out of the blocks there in lane number five for New Zealand. Uh, in your picture at the moment is the Portuguese who took silver a few minutes ago, but it's it's a repeat of the 200 meters. Uh, Carrington and Fisher are looking to put out a marker in the first couple of hundred meters. Nice. You can see after the start, like 50 meters after the start, they they change the stroke, they, they switch into a long stroke because you can't really do a 500 like a 200 with a high stroke rate. You have to change your stroke, you have to stay calm and just keep the pressure there. Seeing them pulling away slightly with Hungary at the top of your picture, also looking at pulling performance, but at the halfway mark, and it is New Zealand by two meters ahead of the field. The girls just look really relaxed, so it doesn't look tough. Perfect conditions out there, yeah. completely flat water. And of course, it's a new combination, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, they're going to be switching around. It's uh, one both lane. Caitlin Ryan's going to be In going next here, but they've, they've clear water girls. now. Yeah. 
familiar territory with 150 meters to go. It is New Zealand in the middle of your picture with Lisa Carrington, Amy Fisher, who are taking it away. Different morphologies, but it seems to be, are, are they working together well? Yeah, you see the legs, you hardly see the legs, but I can see the legs like doing the perfect leg work together, which is very, very important in a crew boat. Well, here they go over the line and great, by great two scene. lengths ahead of Portugal. Portugal. And Hungary. The Hungary, young Hungarians yeah. coming in fourth and fifth, third and fourth place rather. Well, that's two thirds of the job done. And they'll be both coming back together again in a, in a few minutes' time. So it's a good workout. <laughs> yeah, really good workout. <laughs> well done to the Portuguese girls. Second medal in less than 40 minutes. And the young Hungarians got third. So really a flying start again from the Portuguese that like you mentioned yesterday. We see Paminta, who sometimes when he goes out in a thousand, leaves the field completely behind. Mm -hmm. We will see him now in the K1 500 meters in the final. But absolutely perfect conditions today. Really, it's amazing really how good you can conditions. switch off. To be fair, Marcos, the uh, the technical director here, Oliveira, did did say we're hoping to have a, the wind come down. So it's a great exhibition here. Excellent stuff. I wonder what the time's going to be. 41, I guess. 40 or 41, seen. Quick times. You can see the leg work together and how Amy's pushing. It's great. Oh. Date <laughs> so that'd be you silly. have another K4, be careful. <laughs> going to go into uh, another ceremony but we'll just confirm the results where we saw New Zealand Lisa Carrington, Amy Fisher take out the gold medal, first from Charles and Leila take the silver Portugal and Luch and Sensi again a junior young pairs from Hungary taking the bronze medal, moving down Colombia, Great Britain, Colombia good racing there, fifth place New Zealand, Mexico and Spain taking the other positions which is great to see we're going to go forward for a another final sorry another award ceremony now it's going to be the which one's going to be it's going to be it looks like is it the a c1 man 200. 200 that's right So Martin Fuchs is stepping up for the second time this week, which is really good. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the men's canoe single 200 meters will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos os medalhados da C1 200 metros masculinos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the men's canoe single 200 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Vitor Félix, presidente da Federação Portuguesa de Canoagem, acompanhado por Pavel Otmar, team leader da República Checa. The medals will be presented by Victor Félix, president of the Portuguese Canoe Federation, accompanied by Pavel Otmar, team leader from the Czech Republic. E o medalhado de bronze é... The bronze medal winner from Portugal, Tiago Tavares. 
So Thiago Tavares, he looked a bit disappointed when he came across the line because he uh, he was really up there for the last second, but just just edged out in the end. He came across in 39.686. E o medalhado de prata é the silver medalist representing Portugal, Hilda Silva. So Hilda steps up. She's won medals here before. Also competed yesterday in this in the C2 1000, 2000 sorry, no C2 1000. <laughs> An impressive double. E o medalhado de Martin ouro Fuxa, e vencedor da Taça do C1 Mundo. 1000 yesterday, the gold medalist and World Cup winner representing the Czech Republic, Martin Fuxa. Well done, Martin Fuxa. Great weekend for him. He looks delighted. And he's going to go with his brother fairly soon. Yeah. In like a few minutes. So yeah, Martin's exactly. 24 and Peter's 19. This is his first international outing and he medaled yesterday. He medaled yesterday. No, so he came fourth. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da República Checa. Please rise for the national anthem of the Czech Republic. Well done, Martin Fuxa. Uh, we saw 2017. the race a few minutes ago. Look, the breeze has come up in the last five the minutes, and it's a right to left wind, so it's completely different. It's yeah, exactly, the wind is changing, just, just changed in any seconds. After the ceremony, the wind was here. And you can see the flags in the background there, they're really starting yeah. to blow now. But blue sky, lovely warm weather. Water's staying flat, but the. It's quite a breeze out there. It's quite a breeze, yeah. As long as that only happens in the medal zone, we don't, don't mind too much. <laughs> well, there you go. It just shows that it's not only a persistent uh, right to left wind; they can they can blow both ways. Have to ask someone about that because it's quite interesting, really. Well, here we go. This is the warm up for the the line up for the K1 men 500 meters Fernando Pimenta in lane number six is going to be the standout athlete he flew out of the blocks yesterday and dominated from the from the 50 meter mark all the way through the rest of the road Jonathan Boynton from Great Britain I believe he came in fifth he looked uh, he looked good yesterday Zach Rusech is also going in lane number eight and he yesterday came third so some good uh, some good athletes in here Athletes, uh, some of the athletes are, are running off because they're going to go into uh, they're going to go in the next race in a few minutes' time. Apart from Martin Fuchser, who's just chilled. Yeah, he he's just walking, very chilled. Puts on his headband. Brother has the same one, but in blue. Here we go. <laughs> Simon uh, Bezovic from Slovenia. So let's hope that uh, Speller's performance this morning has inspired his compatriot. It's always good if a team member is doing a good race, it just motivates you. Cornel Becky from Hungary. You could put out a hundred different Hungarian athletes yeah, in most, most levels and they're always none of them are gonna disgrace themselves, are they? No. The Hungarians Hungarians in kayak sport, it's pretty much can compare this with Austrian skiing. <laughs> it's just a national sport. Mark Badfali, who we saw yesterday in the crew boats with uh sort of camera. Day number five, Olev 
Kohag. Ukraine have got quite a good team out there this weekend. They have they medalled in several events yesterday. Also a very strong girls team, the Ukraine guys. Yeah, he tries to get maybe some weed from from his boat. Fernando Paminta, who yesterday, last week, yeah, he had a staggeringly successful season apart from the games and it all unwound a little bit there. Yeah, Fernando with, he usually is wearing his red cap, <laughs> like always. And Jonathan Boynton, who's had a good weekend also. Okay, fifth, as I mentioned, in the K1 1000. Last couple of years, he's really stepped up, significantly making finals. Jost, who likes to do anything on a, on a boat. So two Slovenian athletes in the final, which is good to see. It's rare, that. Yeah. And then nine, the Spanish guy. Goitashki from Spain, young team here. So the wind is partially, three of the flags are playing and one of the flags is not in the four, it doesn't give much indication. But it looks like it's turning into quite a, a strong tailwind now. Yeah, it, it, I think it turned already into a tailwind. So this happens really quickly here. I think the guys will be surprised when they, when they, when they will be racing because you go on the water and you, you just accept, expect like non-wind if there is no wind and here the wind changes immediately. So it's quite interesting. In the three different races the ladies are going to do today, they could have three different conditions. Yeah, exactly. So next week, going into Seged, what are your aspirations? What are you doing? I'm doing the K1500 again. So I hope I can step up my performance and see. What do you have Seged to change from this week until next? Can you identify things that you need to work on? Um, I just think I need to I need to get back to to more speed work. I didn't do any speed work, and I just need to go back to that and just go back to racing. That's going to take a few weeks to go through. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did you finish your master's degree in? Yeah, I finished my master's degree after the after the games. I had to finish it, and yeah, I I started to do some some other things and hey yeah, we'll see. Well, they're lining up. Look out for Fernando Pimenta in lane number six. And they're away. A quick start from everybody, actually. Also lane nine, the Spanish. But don't discount in lane number five, the heavily tattooed Ukrainian. He won the K2 1000 yesterday. So Hungary is looking to come out quickly at the moment. Bad Falvi, who medaled yesterday. So all these athletes, are, uh, there's very few athletes actually just going in one race. Yeah. So we're seeing many, many here. But the local favourite who's expected to win is Fernando Pimento and he's very smart boat. They all have the same boat. And he's, uh, he's probably more used to most of the athletes of these changing conditions. But with 250 metres to go, he's already, this is now where he normally pulls away. He still looks strong and controlled here. But you, it's going to be like ooh, you, the Ukraine guys. Well, he won he yesterday. He won yesterday with Italia Tuskin in uh, in a very fast time in the. Wow. And he's really coming through in in, in the K2 1000. So he's really pushing for Fernando Pimenta. He's one who's going to be surprised by this coming at the last 180 meters, and Fernando Pimenta is he's losing it a bit. Coming off the rolls a bit because we've just had Ukraine really blast yeah. away. He's a big lad. Wow. We stood next to him yesterday, and uh, he's a strong athlete. But he's really taken this race apart, hasn't he? He's, he it's took it on he in 15 yeah. meters. He like a really went and through. Forward of <laughs> and Fernando will take second in front of the Hungarian. So Mark Ole Kurkov, who won yesterday, has won again today. Fernando Pimenta. I wonder if he's going to be surprised by that. Well. Very impressive from the 300 meter mark. He just Very turned impressive. on the he turbo, just, yeah, didn't he? He just started again. I'm panting a bit hard. I guess he's going to gain the 5,000 meters as well. They're all panting rather hard, to be fair. But Falvi taking the third position. Well, that was impressive. Great racing from the guy from the Ukraine. 
because here he wasn't really doing much. Well, we did spot him before. Yeah, he, he was controlled here because I've seen him. His stroke rate was very low compared to the others. And then the just something just happened, meters, didn't Yeah, it? and then he was just switching. I thought, hey, wake up, boy. Well, there you go. Sage style, the winner. Yeah, very good technique here, very long. And he lo he does look strong, so <laughs> well deserved. Yeah, they celebrated. There's some good photographs out there and celebrating yesterday. It's great, though, to see the, the delight on their faces. Yeah, one by a, a length. So that's race number 58 of this weekend's activities. We started racing on Thursday morning, came through Thursday afternoon with the, sorry, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. Then just yesterday morning, had yesterday afternoon off, and it's back on the, the race track again today. So it's been heavily used. Here you go, confirmation of the results in 1.37, which again is quite a fast time. Ole Kuktav in Ukraine takes the lead. Fernando Pimenta takes the silver from Portugal, and Mark Badfali from Hungary takes the bronze medal. John Boyton on fourth place, which is really good. Next, sitting next to me yeah. has to wave all the time because she knows every one of the athletes the on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they're coming by waiting for the presentation ceremony. Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do K1 200 metros femininos vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the women's kayak single 200 meter event will begin. She really took it away, didn't she? She had a, a splendid start. We're talking about uh, Teresa Portela. Exactly. She had a strong start as always, and she just kept it. It was really a great race to watch. Great performance from Teresa. Fantastic. Marta Voltkevich was stressed after the Olympics where she got the silver medal. She, yeah. she had an injury. And so it was off, off for a couple of months and just coming back into it. Because normally she dominates the first part of the race. Isn't exactly. She really she also and this year, this today, we didn't actually see it. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos as medalhadas do K1 200 metros feminino. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the women's kayak single 200 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Thomas Konitschko, vice-presidente da Federação Internacional de Canoagem, e por Ricardo Machado, vice-presidente da Federação Portuguesa de Canoagem. The medals will be presented by Thomas Konitschko. Vice President of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Ricardo Machado, Vice President of the Portuguese Canoe Federation. E a medalhada de bronze é... The bronze medalist from Portugal, Marta Valkovic. So Marta Valkovic, she also competed in the 500 meters yesterday. She's had, some, well she's had pretty much good results for the last 10 years and everything, hasn't she? Yeah. You so many in the silver medals. And the crew and boats and yeah. K2 and K4, she also had great results there. The bronze medalist from Poland, Marta Valkovic. E a medalhada de prata é... The silver medalist from Slovenia, Spela Janic. So Spela Pomerica Janic, again, she's been around... Uh, She's from a canoeing family, isn't she? Really? Yeah, exactly. She's married with Stefan Janic, the brother of Natasha Janic. Who said she's going to come back to the sport again. She's in China at the moment. Really? And that's what I, I heard this morning, her. that she's coming back. So, uh, uh, Amazing to see her again. That's from a Hungarian source. The gold medalist and World Cup winner, representing Portugal, Teresa Portea. Well done, very yeah. popular win there. 
and the wind's it's gone from a tailwind to moving around a little bit, so we'll see what the next race will actually give us. Well done to Teresa. Great racing from her here. Of course, we're going to have the national anthem coming up. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional de Portugal. Please rise for the national anthem of Portugal. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists. And as Lisa Carrington is concentrating in the the crew boat, it's nice to give someone else a, a chance, although she's uh, normally has the top of the podium herself. Yeah, it's not easy to beat Lisa and the K1 200. <laughs> and so far, if you just tuned in, uh, Lisa's already won two races. Yeah. And has to go in about half an hour, maybe less, K4. in the K4. We haven't actually seen much of the K4s yet. We've seen them practicing, but although it was it was straight into the final, so we mm. don't have much uh, much of a form. So it'd be really interesting to see how they get forward. <coughs> So moving on, we've seen a bit of can kayaks. We're now going to the canoes and again a chance to see. Well, the weather's up to 29 degrees, so it's the hottest we've seen. Water temperature. We've seen quite a few people swimming in the last couple of days. It's up to 14 degrees, <laughs> which is still still not much, not much fun. No. At, uh, <laughs> at starting, and the wind speed. Well, it changes every second. It changes really every second. You can't say if it's. Uh, it looks like tailwind now, but. As you said, it could change every second. Because when we saw when we saw the uh, the boys going in the practicing and the heats for the for the canoe races, it was it was pandemonium. It was just trying to keep the the boat straight. But if yeah. it's just uh, behind you, it's going to be a lot easier. Next race is going to be the C2 500 meters. As I was saying, it's three minutes to go, so that's going to be this fine. It's going to be really good because we could see the two medalists for, or the three medalists for the 2020 uh, C2 1000s. What I'm talking about is the Fuchses are planning on going together. We have Brendel and Vandry, who are the reigning Olympic champions, Janchuk and Mischuk, who came third in, in Brazil. We're missing the Brazilians. Yeah, but it's, uh, missing the Brazilians. They will come forward. to second. I talked to Brendel yesterday and he said he's certainly planning on, he said it's very, very tight competition, so nothing's taken for granted, but if everything goes to plan, he'd go to Tokyo. And the, uh, they're talking to the, uh, the coaching team from Czech Republic and the two brothers, uh, Junior in the front, so, so uh, Peter and Martin in the back, they're hoping to go to Tokyo, so it could be a lot. It's good, good fun to see. <laughs> Here we go, here's Brendel. He was a uh, light boat yesterday, um, 20 grams light. I think he was philosophical about it. Yeah, the problem is that the, the, the sun is shining on your boat and the boat, if it's outside, it, it starts to get lighter, so, yeah. Anyway, if it's but one gram or one kilogram, it makes no difference. It's, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a technical error. He'll move on. And we do have uh, Portugal coming into it, uh, Lopez Vieira. Mitchell, they came second in the one, two, 
1,000 meters yesterday. The Hungarian crew, Paul Sarudia Adam Vekete. There's massive strength. Yeah, the depth of the strength in there. Look really strong. You can see the upper body looks really, really strong and fit. Well, Helder Silva, we saw him on the podium a few minutes ago, and Nuno Silva, who's uh, same club but not same, not same family. Clearly, the same surname. So he's good to be back in. Sergio Diaz, who stepped up and took a medal yesterday, took two medals yesterday. And then one we minute. do have Pedroza Bernanda. So minute. one minute to go, we're hearing from the, the starters. Come to the starters, moving around. So it's going to be great. It'll be interesting to see how Mar how Peter Fuxer steps up for the first time. Yeah. It's his first international outing. It's good to have your brother in the boat then. More experienced brother. We'll find out, I guess. Unless they start battling, it certainly works for the uh, Tarnovskis. For Moldova, they had a couple. Of, they had a great win last year. I suppose it comes down to understanding if you can understand your brother. But they, as it's well documented, the uh, Fuchsers are there, of a dynamic paddling family. Look at the wind there; it's quite strong, isn't it? Mm, strong back wind. That's great. You have a very fast time. So lanes one are the Czechs, lane two, Sebastian Brendel, Jan Vandry, the reigning Olympic champions. Sebastian generally had, Brendel had four months off just to relax and, uh, and come back into it. And we were speaking to him a couple of days ago, he said very much case he had the strength but needs the stamina. But Spain on the bottom of your picture in lane number nine, they've come off to a cracking start here in your picture in lane number five. We are looking at the Ukrainians who came away with a victory yesterday, second yesterday. But as always, it's Helder Silva who only knows how to go fast yeah. with his compatriot Nuno Silva is, uh, is taking that he's done this in the last couple of races and uh, didn't manage to hold on last time he was leading until the uh, until the 250 mark in the 1000 let's see how he does in the 500 top of your picture it is Fuchsers are leading Brendel um, so it's very much a case of the action is in the near lanes and it is the young Spaniards but very much all in a line with Portugal would be surprised if they can keep on to it but let's hope they do for their sake Brendel at the moment sitting back in fourth place with the Fuchsers looking to do something strong at the top of your picture. I'm not sure the wind's going to come into it because it looks like it's quite a good tailwind. But on the overheads you can certainly see Portugal are leading at this stage. And on lane seven the Portuguese still in front. But look, now it's coming Ukraine. back. Yeah. Ukraine who have the more experience. They wow. won the Duisburg last year. They're really looking to come through. Germany and Czech Republic coming up now. Like. Wow. And also, look at the top of your picture. It looks like they're making a move, but so far the action is going to be with Spain are coming in at the last minute. So it's going to be, is it Ukraine and Spain? Um, Brendel's coming past. This is the closest we've seen all day, but Ukraine going to Ukraine, are going to hand yeah. off from Germany and Spain. Well, they're putting their hands up in the air. They've. Uh, have some good victories in the last couple of years. And Brendel put in a, a flying last 50 meters. He said he wanted to work hard. This year was going to be more relaxed. Mm. And he's really trying to peak in August for the the World Championships in Machucha. Hey boys are breathing heavily. All off to a fine start. Especially the Spanish. And as we saw in the other two races, the Portuguese have a cracking start, but they don't yeah. yet have the stamina, something to work on maybe. Well, this was a great race because it changed hands two or three times. Five boats in it at this stage. And they're quite a light pair, so they just kept, uh, kept going, going, going. A close third for the Spanish here in front of the Portuguese, actually, and also in front of the Fuxa brothers. Let's see what the time is going to be. One forty-one. 41. Pretty much the same time like the girls' K2. Well. 
two tenths of a second mm -hmm. back and then it was all within half a second the top three which is a great result there so Jan Chuk, Miss Chuk for Ukraine take the gold medal Brendel Vandry for Germany take the silver and Pereiro and Bernandez take the bronze for, for Spain with Portugal just missing out these times and the Fuchsers with one and a half second they have some work to do but this is the first time internationally they're together so yeah, and, they, exactly. and they held it together most of the race didn't they? No, great racing from the from the Czech guys, Peter Fuchser and Martin Fuchser. Especially Peter is just 19 years old, his first race, so good racing from him there. Now it's the same distance, but it's the women. So we're seeing uh, teams that have already been action today. We saw the Brits are going again. So you see, for the can they were the dominant forces in the in the C2 200. You see, Spain have put a couple of teams in. Portugal have a team in Chile and Hungary. Hungary, to be fair, lane number eight. They have the pedigree. Uh, we do have uh, Vega Bala, who's won both races so far in the singles. But uh, let's go down them as they see. It's Ana Rios and Maria Ramel from Spain. With Nierton and Cien Mills, who came second. But probably it's always less than now, okay, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we saw them there. Perez and Jekyll again from Spain. We just see how they handle the internal competition. So we have two, two race offs here, pretty much. So Spain one and three, Great Britain three and five. Here we go, Bethany Gill, Clay Bracewell. They won the C2 200 meters. Okay, Rodriguez and Fire. Chile coming out, Rocker and Milan. Um, oh dear, this is going to grow much bigger in the next couple of years, this one, isn't it? The C2500 yeah. being Olympic. Very Bala and Kinsuke Takach. They are the reigning under 23 world champions in this. Still young girls. Yes. But I think a, a lot of them are, by definition, as it's new, a lot of the athletes have been taken. Mm. taken from trial schemes and, and, and come in. All wanting to be the first Olympic champion. So the favourable conditions, we could have quite a quite a fast time here. The fastest ever was in Duisburg oh, last year. The start from the guys from Chile was have they not pulled them back? No, I don't think so. Okay, fair enough. Well, there's a great flying start for the Hungarians. They're coming off, I suppose. They have to get them away at some point, but there's no one else coming back. But it looked like on the first <laughs> instance, if we can see them out of our eye, it looks like the Hungarians are, Hungarian are a class strong. act, aren't they? They really, yeah. uh, you can see they've been in the boat together a lot. Mm. They can smooth and strong. The British girls the moment on the second place in front of the Spanish. Well, it's different tactics because the Brits had a, about 20 minutes more, sorry, the Hungarians had about 20 minutes off, more off the water. Mm. They raced the individual boat, coming first and second as they did yesterday. And they're really putting up a good exhibition here. Well, there's a battle between the Brits and the Spanish, but no doubt about who's taking it away. Taking the and they'll become much more familiar faces in Hungary and all over the world in the next couple of years. Well, so only 200 metres to go and they have four boat lengths clear. Looks like the Spanish at the moment are taking on, holding on to the second position. But look at that strong wind. It's really turned to be really strong. In this the is the exactly, it's going to, we're going to see in a couple of minutes, we're going to see the K4s mm. absolutely flying. Yeah. But this is the race we're looking at at the moment. It's coming to Monte Vele in Portugal. It's the first ICF World Cup of the 2017 season. And the Hungarian pair of Varag Bala, Kinsko Takac, they've both taken gold and silver medals so far. And they are really pulling away from the field. It's a, a one-horse race, this. They're still looking strong and controlled. Nice paddling. The Hungarian coach looks really relaxed. <laughs> Well, he is going through what sort of time. This is the quickest time this ever, is it? Oh, I think it is. 59.68. That's the quickest time there's ever, ever been. Wow. 
So they don't do world records in this sport. You do the f world's fastest time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've just seen it live. So you look back and tell your grandparents, well when done, grandchildren, when the time is They're 20 exhausted. seconds lower. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Greg Bala, Kinsuke Takach. Both uh, under 23s. What's the actual rule for under 23s? Do you have to be under 23 that year or how does it work? Um, if you are under 20, you can be 23 in that year. But when you turn like 24, you are not under 23 anymore. So you can be 23. If you're 23, you're still under 23. And it's a bit like horses, because in horse racing in the Northern Hemisphere, all horses are born on the 1st of January, and the Southern Hemisphere, they're born on the 1st of August. So it's the same sort of, same sort of <laughs> thing. <laughs> but uh, well done, what a performance. As the, uh, the speaker just picked up his words, and he said a demonstration in perfect unison. Which he is, <laughs> it looks yeah. like they've really gone, uh, gone forward so well. And as I mentioned, it's the fastest time ever recorded over this distance in an official event. Well, the conditions are favourable, aren't they? Yeah. But the athletes, the under 23 world champions. It's a good head, uh, back wind, a warm water, so you can expect good times also in the K4s now. So, two more events to go. Are we going to have a medal ceremony? Probably. Yes, we are. Well done. Panting hard, giving it the wall. They can just put that. Uh, <laughs> say good to talk to as well because they're very modest. But here we go. Bala and Takachi in one, 59.599, a whole seven seconds back were Perez and Jacome from Spain, Great Britain, taking a second medal, 15 seconds back off the pace was Gil and Bracewell for Great Britain. So they took so far out of this weekend, they've had a gold and a bronze. With a great Spain. weekend for the British. Yeah, I think it is. It's, 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 it, they, 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 it's, I've been following them for four years and they've always been really, really reticent to talk but this weekend they're all really friendly so <laughs> really yeah. change in structure or something but thank you so much whoever's organized it but all the brits that section are really happy to talk to us and they're really mm -hmm. relaxed so it might be a, a new regime coming in but if, uh, if it is that's great for us there you go the stands are going to be slightly more filled uh, next year for the for the world championships but the great thing is that all the volunteers here have a they have a drink together at the end of the day it's such a, a a, a nice real atmosphere. family affair. Yeah. This tower is quite high, and it's I was really talking high, to yeah. a <laughs> chap who put the, the flag up a couple of days ago. He's all over the place. Uh, Victor, he works at the local organising committee. He actually had to take the flag up, and it's about six, seven metres high. And the tower, he said it was swaying like nothing ah. when he was up there. He said he quite enjoyed it, which is actually quite worrying. <laughs> you see the over course, you see the. Uh, you see well, the, the at the, the front of your channel. picture, the, on the warm-up tunnel yeah. on the right, on the left, you see where the the trees are supposed to be growing, and then they're, they're all looking at new plans. Apparently, there's a plan. Well, I won't go into any details, but there'll be announcements of what they're going to do. I know they've had people from the local university coming over in the last couple of days. Cause if you put a wall up, all the wind does is goes over the wall and says thank you, uh -huh. and comes back down again. But apparently, in Oklahoma, they're, they're testing something where the the air goes through and it disperses the. Uh, but they the wanted wind. to build the same thing here. Well, yeah. I think they're talking. They're open to any ideas. If anyone ide anyone has any bright suggestions out there, I know in Tokyo they're putting like a two-level tree system in which disperses mm. the weather. So they just need to have a way of dispersing this wind. There are the cameramen sitting down. It's uh, Ballant, <laughs> who's actually quite funny. He's, this is his passion. This is what he does. Next weekend, he's actually the technical organizer. So he's the main man for the Hungary regatta. Ballant. Yeah. So that's his, he's, the, he's the main man next weekend, just stretching his back out a bit. We're going to have another award ceremony now. It's starting to be a bit cloudy. We have the flower ladies there, we just need the athletes. The C2 man? Yeah, that's right. We've just like seen that. Sebastian, Brendel, Jan Vandry just come out of the water and uh, looking, looking quite tired, really. I 
wonder if it's going to rain even. This. Uh, it looks like it looks like it's going to rain. Because in the last two minutes, the the tailwind is deciding to it, m this side of the of the of the water. We have uh, the, the flags are down, and the other side of the water, 150 meters away, there's actually quite a strong tailwind. Yeah. So it's really look. If you look here, just in front of us on the medal ceremony, the flags have dropped Hardly completely. No wind, yeah. But if you look on your TV monitor, just across the uh, across the pond from us, they're actually quite strong, and the clouds are starting to group, but it's still quite warm. Anyway, we're going to celebrate the medals and the performances we've seen this morning. Sebastian Brendel is just trying to tell the guys what to do. Hurry up. <laughs> well, he doesn't fly until tomorrow, so I don't know what his, I know what his stress is going to be. Just wants to, wants to get on with it. There's a cracking race there, but finally at the end of the day, the Ukrainians just came home by 0.2 of a second ahead of uh, Brendel and Vandry, who were closing up really, really quickly. So they had some, they had some good finishing speed. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos os medalhados da C2 500 metros masculinos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the men's C2 500 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Tomas Konitschko. Vice-Presidente da Federação Internacional de Canoagem e por Yuri Chaban, bicampeão olímpico, team leader da Ucrânia. The medals will be presented by Thomas Kinicho, Vice-President of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Yuri Chaban, team leader of Ukraine. E os medalhados de bronze são... The bronze medalists representing Spain, Hugo Pedrero and Alex Bernandez. Well done, mm. they had a a fast finish of well, they looked in it, looked exhausted when they came across the line, it was only about 10 minutes ago. The silver medalists representing Germany Sebastian Brendel and Jan Vandre. Well done. It's the first year last year that right. uh, they stepped up together in the boat. Yeah. And then a few weeks later they, they decided Olympics to... Well, they were here. Olympic champions, weren't they? Yeah. Both big guys. Sebastian a bit heavier. Thomas Knitschke giving out the end, obviously. Yuri Shaban, the double Olympic champion. E os medalhados de ouro e vencedores da Taça do Mundo. The gold medalists and World Cup winners representing Ukraine, Dmitro Yanchuk and Taras Mischuk. Well, good cheers there. They're quite vocal, the supporters. So Ukraine have, have picked up a load of medals this weekend. Olympic medalists as well. So we have two of the Olympic medalists back on, on the... A strong field here. Yeah. They're going to be happy. Some Ukrainian supporters. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Ucrânia. Please rise for the national anthem of Ukraine.
Well done, all the athletes. Ukraine take the top honour. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup. Two Memphis. more events to go on the live programme. On the live feed, we're still going to have the 5,000 metres new format later this afternoon. It's where normally they start before the start line. This time they start uh, 500 metre mark. We're going to that second. But anyway, here's we go. The K4 men, 500 metres, new Olympic event. And times are going to come down, I would say, quite significantly in the next couple of years. Main one, the Spanish crew with Rosa, Martia, Aden, and Vasquez. Well, some experienced names, names there. Yeah, this, these are the youngsters from Hungary. Lane Let's see three. how they go forward. And this experienced uh, team from there's there's five or six from the top level. Um, they don't come much more experienced than uh, Zolts and Camera and his mates. They've all been competing this weekend in different events and different team events, doing quite well. Let's see if they can keep it going. Uh, Camera's 39 now, been on the circuit since he was 18 Olympics. Oh, so it's a, long no, time. He's, he's a superhero there, keeping the motivation going. Algeria, Algeria they, they've been uh, see them here. They've been having a lot of fun today. I think this is uh, Usama. He had, he had had two races in a row. He was in both B finals this morning. The Brits that uh, are really? looking really dynamic, spending a bit of time with them the last couple of days, and they're off, but they're off to a lousy spark. Very strong start from the Portuguese crew. As ever, in also in lane number eight, Ukraine off to a good start. But Portuguese, as you said, they really came and took it out straight away. Very high stroke rate in the K4 here. But at the bottom of your picture, it is Ukraine in lane number eight. In your picture now, they really are putting in a powerful performance. We saw them training and they looked really, really solid. Yeah, lane nine looks like lane nine is taking the lead. We can also see Spain at the top of your picture with Portugal. Emmanuel Silva in the stroke position also looking good. So the 250 metres, there's nothing in it between Ukraine in blue and Portugal in red at the top of the picture. Here we go. But the Ukrainian guys, they seem to... Well, I know in the bow, who's complaining about a sore shoulder, sorry, in, in the stern, he was complaining about a sore shoulder on Wednesday. It looks like it's going to keep it together. But with well, the weather conditions, we now have three boats in a row. Up. Yeah. And the Hungarian guys. So they're dropping off the pace a little bit. So it's at the top of your picture. It's it is now... Spain on lane one. Spain on lane one and on lane three. Right, the Portuguese like guys. Portuguese and ah, Ukraine. It looks already very tough with the Ukrainian guys, but it seems that they're going to take the win. Yeah, very... Ukraine take yeah. the win from Portugal. So that's two Ukraines in a row. We just have a <laughs> team who've just taken the medals just below us. Uh, the the, the two, uh, two C2 guys jumping up in the air when they can pass The guy in the back looks just big. <laughs> he is big. Yeah. We, we were filming him on Thursday, I believe, and he was like, no, I'm not going to say, will you go faster? He said, no, no, I've got a sore shoulder. I'm not going to. Oh. <laughs> so he's managed to keep, and when he said no, we said, okay, fine. He's managed to keep it going. Third place for the Hungarian crew. Good effort. So Ukraine kept it going. And really, it's the last 100 metres they really kept it together. <coughs> be interesting to see the times, because with the, with the tailwind of well, which is slight, it's going, to, time, it's going yeah. to be in their favour, wasn't it? So what's the tactic here? Are you, are you going 95% or what? No, I, I didn't, didn't really race K4 ever, because I used to race just K2 in a crew boats. But the K4 is just like keeping a high stroke rate, keeping it strong all the way through, and just trying to finish strong. Very close place for Portugal in the second and also on the third between Hungary and Spain. Here we go, you can see them turning around, but look at the 120. Wow. So Ukraine take it from Portugal, take it from Hungary, they're all within case. Spain, Great Britain just 2.4 back, Hungary, Portugal and Algeria uh, still have a little bit of work to do, but 120s, it looks rather fast. Well, it's certainly going to be uh, spectacular, isn't it? I guess there's no choice. But if you're going to have no more uh, K2 200, no more K4 1000, this this is 
perhaps going to take over as the most spectacular yeah. event. The K4 men 500 meter will be the most spectacular event. It's, it's an Olympic program in 2020. So because they changed a bit in the program and now the K4 500 meter men's they put in and, and just screw the K2 200 meter for the men. Well, it's a very fast time here. The fastest one ever we've seen was 119.6. Wow. And they're at 120, so they're within less than a second of the, the, the fastest ever time. So they're really putting down an early mark. It'd be interesting to see what we see if we have good conditions in the next couple of weeks. Mm. And it's just the first regatta of the, the season. Some of the big so boys wow. coming through. So one more race to go on the A programme. And it's going to be the women doing all the thing. A lot of familiar faces here. It's going to be really interesting to see New Zealand. Um, they have two boats in this. They have the uh, what's the A boat, um, where they did so well from a standing start a couple of years ago. Jamie Lovett has uh, retired. So hello if you're if you're watching. And uh, at the moment, provisionally, Lisa Carrington has stepped into the boat with Kylie Imwe taking over as the stroke. But it's going to be interesting to see how they develop. Portugal always around, very strong. Spain up for things. GB, a team that have always been racing this weekend. So it's really going to be interesting to see who comes through. And let's not kill out out. Maybe the favourites, which is Ukraine in lane number two. Can they have third win in a row? The Ukrainian girls were always, always a good boat in the K4. So well, here they are. They're very smart. Uh, headbands on. Is it a hat or a headband? And Portugal. The young crew, and there you can see the, the K2. serious Q. Teresa also on the third spot. She won the K1 200 meters today. They keep mixing and matching and turning around a little bit. Mm. There's McKeeley, Thompson, Cole, and Ford fighting it out with the uh, and being inspired by the generation that's just coming through. So it's, it's great that uh, there's going to be two K4s from New Zealand. No one thought themselves saying that a couple of two years ago. Mm -hmm. Two minutes to start the break. The young Spanish crew. Two minutes. So two minutes to go. The British girls. Deb and Sam. Raced also the K2 500 meters some minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, they came fifth a few minutes ago, didn't they? Hungary has Naomi, that's just three. This, this is Dora, Anna, and Naomi, all international paddlers. But here we go, here's the uh, eyes are going to be on New Zealand. Already taken out, to, well, the team's looking good. If the, the Carrington and Fisher have already taken out two goals this morning. Kathleen Ryan took out the gold in the K1 500. And then finally, so let's not talk about Mexico. Garcia, Rodriguez, Morales, and Rodriguez, they've been around for a while. So another minute to say before they're going to go. Let's see what sort of times we can have a fast time. I've got a feeling that the New Zealanders are going to really be pushing quite a fast time because they seem to be quite motivated. So the fastest ever time for women is... Uh, over the 500 meters is 128. Wow. Let's see if they can go quite close to that. That's the team B from New Zealand. They'll be going on to Seged next weekend, where there's some changing around slightly. So in Austria, just not the strength and depth needed to put forward together a K4. Not yet. Not yet, no. Okay. The girls who are training now are quite young. All right. Yeah. But maybe in 2024, we could have a 2K4. Would be exciting. Here we go. They're lining up for the last live event of the day. It's only 500 meters. It's the K4 ready for action. Ukraine lane number two. Thank Portugal, you. we've seen having very fast starts so far. So look out for ready. lane number four. Yeah. And <laughs> New Zealand at the bottom of your picture look to have a flying start. Also a good start from lane two from the Ukraine girls. That's right, we saw them. So, so pretty much as we'd spotted, it's Ukraine in two, it's New Zealand in nine at the moment with Portugal who've had fast starts in lane number four coming through. Could well have a two horse race here. So far it is, they haven't settled permanently on their positions in the baits and there's another girl very, very close. But at the moment, it looks like New Zealand are really putting down some powerful 
powerful stroke. So the yeah, coordination, exactly. would you say? As you can see, the New Zealand girls, their stroke rate is very low compared to the Ukrainian girls. So they can just like if if they if they keep the stroke rate high, the next 200 meters, I think they will pull away. Well, they can't really see each other because they're at different ends of the track. But we can it see a great close. view. They're very, very close. Yeah. <laughs> New Zealand against Ukraine. It's only two boats wow. in it. And with the camera angle, it's a bit deceptive. But if you look at the white boys, they are absolutely line and line. It looks like New Zealand are digging in with the Carrington effect, which is the never beaten once you're ahead. But it's going to be desperately close here. It's going to be Coming really up to close. 100 meters to go. Look very good. And it's, the camera angle is a bit of deceptive. They're actually in a line together gritting their teeth now coming to the last 50 looks meters looks like the new zealand girls are, no i can't say no it's whoa it's new zealand yeah new yeah. zealand take it third for hungary and fourth place for the girls from portugal time of one was it 132 made to work for that it's a good workout yeah <laughs> third race third final that's, that's the thing I suppose we need to keep in context that uh, Lisa Kangs and Amy Fisher this is their third race in about an hour yeah exactly and it's, it's, it's not just a I suppose if you made them just do it as a training exercise it would be manageable but the fact that each time they've had to go out of the water go to boat control exactly take the medal ceremony take their medals it's go back in again warm up doing I'm all sure this mentally stuff. and physically yeah. it's been a, a logistical very powerful exercise nice careful wheel so can you see how they're looking good yeah like they look amazing <laughs> perfect so new zealand win by about a meter it doesn't matter how far you win by you've come ahead i've had some great results for ukraine today they've taken two firsts a also, second yeah also great racing from the young hungarian crew Looks Katrin Cash But there's no China there's no great surprises there, is there? No. From it's Hungary. Not. They've all come uh, they've all come through really, really well. Well done girls. Well that's been a lot of fun. We've seen twelve races so far, confirmation of the results. New Zealand, Imri Carrington, Fisher and Ryan take the gold medal for New Zealand. Ukraine take the silver medal and Hungary in third. Closely followed by Portugal one, Great Britain, New Zealand two, six seconds back off the pace, gives them something to think about. Spain, Mexico and the young Portuguese, all within ten seconds of each other. So we're going to have one more ceremony on the live here together. And it's the C1200 women, I believe. Yeah, I think so. So no surprises. The Hungarians, uh, Virag has taken... I think three goals, yeah, three goals this weekend, so it's looking really, really good. Well done to the organisers there, because they've managed to put in fairly seamlessly six medal ceremonies and 12 events all within an hour and a half. So they've really managed to switch them around very cleverly. So we're just about to start for the medal ceremony. And Ukraine are pretty much putting someone on all the, all the podiums. Yeah, Ukraine had a great performance from the team this weekend. The boys, the girls. So, Anna, we've seen some good racing today. Yeah, some amazing racing. Inspires you to go ahead. So what will you do? Will you go, when do you leave?
tomorrow morning. Okay. We will leave tomorrow morning. And, and you go straight to Seged? No, we will stay on Tuesday at home and train on Tuesday in the morning and in the afternoon. And then the next day, Wednesday morning, we will leave for Seged. But this has been great in Portugal. It's been really a lot of fun, really good weather. So it's last live. You can listen to the live feed there. You still have some. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists medals. for the women's canoe single 200 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por José Perurenha, presidente da Federação Internacional de Canoagem. The medals will be presented by José Perurenha, president of the International Canoe Federation. E a medalhada de bronze é a bronze medal representing Ukraine, Ludmila Lutsan. So Ludmila Lutsan, it's three in a row that the uh, Ukrainians have been on the, the on the podium, podium and today, winning and yeah. that. No, well done to Ukraine. <laughs> Jose Perrina, the ICF president from Spain, the former Olympian himself, I believe in Mexico. Um, he's uh, giving out the awards today. Looks absolutely delighted. Yeah, and then the, we see, uh, eh? the silver medalist representing Hungary, Kingso Takash. Kingso is the second time that she's had to settle for second, time. second place. I'm sure she'll do something about that. We'll try and do something about that in yeah. the next couple of days. <laughs> they, they also won the, the C2500 by, by a significant amount and made it the fastest time ever. She the medal of gold and of the Taça do Mundo. The gold medalist and World Cup winner representing Hungary, Viraj Bala. Viraj Bala, this is this is won three gold medals this weekend, so it couldn't be actually wow. better. So great performance there. She's certainly uh, looking to put down a marker. So she'll be a big name to look out for in uh, 2020. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Hungria. Please rise for the national anthem of Hungary. Of Hungary. Well done, Virag. Well done, Hungary. Well, and well done, all the competitors here. Heats, difficult conditions, finals, dream conditions. So it's been a really, really good competition, a really good competition. Nearly 300 athletes have uh, graced us with their presence. And we move on now. The circus moves on to Hungary. Uh, you'll be able to watch all the videos, give us any feedback, anything you like about it, anything you want improving, please. We're always welcome to hear your thoughts. Uh, you'll be able to look at all the social media stuff coming up in the next few days we do a highlights package which uh, shows the best of the action coming up also and it's led me to say thank you so much for Anna Hatch for making the effort to come in and give us your wisdom <laughs> thank and, you for uh, having me it's always pleasure and uh, I hope you have a lot of fun in the next couple of days and in Seged and you said you're going to Serbia as well yeah we're going to Serbia doing the double there. excellent stuff yeah. and hopefully doing yourself proud in the world championships later in Ricicci so there's going to be action continuing. Uh, there's going to be the 5,000 meters. You're doing the 5,000 meters? Yeah, I'm doing the K1 5,000 meters later today. And it's a new course, a new track, a new way. Exactly. You start now at the 500 meter mark and you're going to the finish here and then you're doing five laps of 300 meters. And we are starting like one minute behind, after the, behind the K1 men. So I think it's going to be fun to watch. By watching this in live, I'm Matthew Layton, Anna Hedge. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody, and we will be speaking to you soon.
E enquanto aguardamos pela equipa da Hungria, que esteve agora no K4500 metros para vir para a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do do K2500, temos uma informação de última hora, uh, na final de C2 500 metros femininos, C2 500 metros femininos, vitória da Hungria, vira as bala, Kincho Takaz, elas bateram a melhor marca mundial de sempre, 1.59, 599, 4 décimos de segundo mais rápidas do que a anterior marca, melhor marca mundial de Irina Andriva e Olécia Romantsenko, da Rússia, tempo esse que é da primeira Taça do Mundo em Duisburg, na Alemanha, em 2016. Portanto, melhor tempo mundial de sempre. Cumprido aqui em Montemoro Velho. Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do K2 500 metros femininos vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the women's K2 500 meter will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos as medalhadas do K2 500 metros femininos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the women's K2 500 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Ricardo Machado, vice-presidente da Federação Portuguesa de Canoagem, acompanhado por John Proter, team leader da Nova Zelândia. The medals will be presented by Ricardo Machado, vice-president of the Portuguese Canoe Federation, accompanied by John Protter, team leader from New Zealand. E as medalhadas de bronze são... The bronze medalists from Hungary, Nomi Lutz and Sofia Ceznazi. E as medalhadas de prata. The silver medalists, representing Portugal, Joana Vasconcelos and Francisca Laia. E as medalhadas de ouro e vencedoras da Taça do Mundo. The gold medalists and World Cup winners representing New Zealand, Lisa Carrington and Amy Fisher.
Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Nova Zelândia. Please rise for the national anthem of New Zealand. Aplausos às medalhadas da Taça do Mundo 2017. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists. We'll continue here at Monte Moravello with more medal ceremonies. We have the men's K1 500 meter ceremony coming up for you very shortly. That will be followed by the men's K1 200 meter medal ceremony. Não, mas é da escola, é um 
Mas olha que não, olha que aquela câmara está a fazer. Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do K1 500 metros masculinos vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the men's kayak single 500 meters will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos os medalhados do K1 500 metros masculinos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the men's kayak single 500 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Carlos Marta, presidente da Fundação do Desporto, e pelo bicampeão olímpico Yuri Sheban. The medals will be presented by Carlos Marta, president of the Portuguese Sports Foundation, accompanied by Yuri Sheban. Team leader of Ukraine. E o medalhado de bronze é... The bronze medalist representing Hungary, Mark Batfalvi. E o medalhado de prata é... The silver medalist representing Portugal, Fernando Pimenta. Medalhado de ouro e vencedor da Taça do Mundo. The gold medalist and World Cup winner representing Ukraine, Ole Kukarik. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Ucrânia. Please rise for the national anthem of Ukraine. O vosso aplauso aos medalhados da Taça do Mundo 2017. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists.
Well, stay with us, folks. We have a few more medal ceremonies to go. Next will be the turn of the K1 men 200 meter medalists. After that, we'll have C2 women 500, K4 women 500, K4 men 500 medal ceremonies, and then a short break before it's the turn of the endurance athletes where we will see the 5,000 meter races for C1 and K1. That will be around about two o'clock. So a few more medal ceremonies, time for a quick break, and then we'll be back for the 5,000 meter events at two o'clock. E dentro de momentos vamos ter a entrega de prémios do K1 200 metros masculinos, onde assistimos à vitória impressionante de Maxime Beaumont, de França. O segundo lugar foi para Igor Trunov, da Ucrânia, e Alexis Rumiansev, da Letónia. A arrecadar o bronze, é dentro de momentos então a entrega destas medalhas. Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do K1 200 metros masculinos vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the men's kayak single 200 meters will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos os medalhados do K1 200 metros masculinos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the men's kayak single 200 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Emílio Torrão, presidente da Câmara Municipal de Montemoro Velho, acompanhado de François Deling, team leader de França. The medals will be presented by Emilio Torrão, mayor of Montemoro Velho, accompanied by François Deling. Team leader of France. O medalhado de bronze é the bronze medalist representing Latvia, Alexis Romanchevs. Medalhado de prata é the silver medalist representing Ukraine, Igor Trunov. E o medalhado de ouro e vencedor da Taça do Mundo. The gold medalist and World Cup winner representing France, Maxime Beaumont. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional de França. Please rise for the national anthem of France.
Esse aplauso aos medalhados da Taça do Mundo 2017. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists. Dentro de momentos vamos ter a entrega de medalhas da C2, 500 metros femininos, virados bala, Kincho Takaz, melhor marca mundial de sempre em C2, 500 metros, 1, 59, 599, mais rápidas do que a anterior marca da equipa da Rússia, Irina Andriva, Olécia Romancenko, 1, 59, 944, portanto estas atletas da Hungria a partir de hoje têm a melhor marca mundial de sempre. Equipa de Espanha, equipa de Espanha, Ana Rios Maria Ramal, C2, 500 metros, Ana Rios Maria Ramal, C2, 500 metros de Espanha, para a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas, urgente, urgente, Ana Rios Maria Ramal de Espanha, para a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas, da C2, 500 metros. Well, we're just waiting for the Spanish crew, who were the bronze medalists in the event. We're just about to see the medals being presented for. That was the C2 women at 500 meters. There have been some changes from the officials. 
Two British crews being disqualified there, which moves up the uh, Spanish crew. So we're just waiting for them. And then when they're here, we'll be able to go ahead with the medal ceremony for the C2 women 500 meters. That will be followed by both K4s, K4 women 500 and the K4 men 500. There'll be a little break after that, and then we'll be back at two o'clock, and it'll be the turn of the endurance athletes, the 5,000 meter events for the single boats. Equipo de España, España, Ana Ríos, María Ramal, por favor. Si clasificaron en tercero en la C2, 500 metros, equipo de España. Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas da C2 500 metros femininos vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the women's C2 500 meters will begin. E senhores, apresentamos as medalhadas da C2 500 metros femininos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the women's C2 500 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Emílio Torrão, presidente da Câmara Municipal de Montemoro Velho, e por Zaba Hutner, team leader da Hungria. The medals will be presented by Emilio Torrão, mayor of Montemoro Velho, Accompanied by Zaba Hutner, team leader of Hungary. As medalhadas de bronze são... The bronze medalists representing Spain, Ana Rios and Maria Ramal.
e as medalhadas de prata. The silver medalists representing Spain, Maria Perez and Anita Yacome. As medalhadas de ouro e vencedoras da Taça do Mundo. The gold medalist and World Cup winners representing Hungary, Viraj Bala and Kikso Takash. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Hungria. Please rise for the national anthem of Hungary. Vosso aplauso às medalhadas da Taça do Mundo 2017. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists.
Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do K4 500 metros femininos vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the women's K4 500 meters will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos as medalhadas do K4 500 metros femininos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the women's K4 500 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por José Manuel Constantino, presidente do Comitê Olímpico de Portugal, acompanhado por John Proter, team leader da Nova Zelândia. The medals will be presented by José Manuel Constantino, president of the Portuguese Olympic Committee, accompanied by John Proter. Team leader of New Zealand. As medalhadas de bronze são the bronze medalist representing Hungary, Noemi Lutz, Rita Katrinec, Esther Malksina, and Sofia Cesnazi. E as medalhadas de prata. The silver medalist representing Ukraine, Maria Kichasova, Anastasia Todorova, Anastasia Horolova, and Ina Harishchun. E as medalhadas de ouro e vencedoras da Taça do Mundo. The gold medalists and World Cup winners representing New Zealand, Kyla Imri, Amy Fisher, Lisa Carrington and Caitlin Ryan.
favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Nova Zelândia. Please rise for the national anthem of New Zealand. Aplauso às medalhadas da Taça do Mundo 2017. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists. De momentos vamos ter a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do K4 500 metros masculinos com a presença dos portugueses Emanuel Silva, David Varela, João Ribeiro e David Fernandes no pódio. Segue já dentro de instantes. That's right, don't go away folks. We've got one more big medal ceremony for the K4s yet to go and Portugal took the silver medal. So stay around for that. I'll be in the next few minutes. That's men's K4 500 meter medal ceremony. And we've got a short break before the 5000s begin.
Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas do K4 500 metros masculinos vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony of the men's K4 500 meters will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos os medalhados do K4 500 metros masculinos. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists for the men's K4 500 meter event. As medalhas serão entregues por Vitor Félix, presidente da Federação Portuguesa de Canoagem, acompanhado pelo bicampeão olímpico Yuri Sheban. The medalists will be presented by Victor Felix, president of the Portuguese Canoe Federation, accompanied by Yuri Chaban, team leader from Ukraine. E os medalhados de bronze. The bronze medalists from Hungary, Zoltan Kamara, Tamas Kulapai, David Toth and Daniel Powman. E os medalhados de prata. The silver medalist representing Portugal, Emmanuel Silva, David Varela, João Ribeiro e David Fernandes. Os medalhados de ouro e vencedores da Taça do Mundo. The gold medalists and World Cup winners representing Ukraine, Krylo Chernomorov, Ole Kukarik, Daniel Kutzmin and Igor Trunov. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Ucrânia. Please rise for the national anthem of Ukraine.
Vosso aplauso aos medalhados da Taça do Mundo 2017. Give a warm round of applause to the 2017 World Cup medalists. Vamos ter aqui uma breve pausa até às duas da tarde para o início das provas dos 5 mil metros. Aproveitem agora para comer qualquer coisa para assistir a estas provas espetaculares em circuito. Vamos ter vários portugueses em prova e vários medalhados das regatas desta manhã e de ontem de manhã. Até já, regressamos dentro de sensivelmente 25 minutos. Esta é a tua medalha do vinho? Não queres? 